Okay, we're going to find the centroid of this complex shape. And um, as you know, we're assuming that this shape is a cross section of a large beam uh, that's uniform in density. And so we're going to find the centroid. And the first thing I like to do, and the first thing you always should do, is identify a zero, zero, an origin point. And we're just going to do the bottom left corner here. Um, you could do any number of places. I think here's another decent spot to consider putting one, but we won't put it there. Um, and so that's going to be our zero, zero. And then we're going to divide this into a few shapes, right? And I think that's wise. So we're going to put a shape here. This will be shape one. We're going to divide this here as well. And that's going to get us shape two. And then we're going to call this shape three up here. Okay, so let's do some work for finding the centroids of each individual shape. And then we're going to do a weighted average of those shapes. So first, let's get the areas of the shapes. The area for shape one is really pretty simple, right? It's just um, five by one. So this is going to be five square inches. So that's pretty easy. The area for shape two, it is, if you look, this is five units tall, minus one, minus one. And so that's going to be three by, and it's one unit wide. It's the three minus the two there. So three square inches. And then this final shape is pretty easy to see. It's just the three by one. And so that's going to equal the three by one. And that's going to be three inches squared for a total of 11 inches squared for the overall area of the shape. And then now we're going to find the centroids of each individual shape. So let's look at shape one first. It's very straightforward, super straightforward. Shape one, uh, halfway across the five and halfway up the one. The centroid is going to be right here in the center of this rectangle. Uh, we put our centroid note location, and it's going to be at the point 2.5.5. So we can put that in here. Our x location is our 2.5 and 0.5 is our y location. And so when we multiply the five by 2.5, we're of course going to get 12.5 as our weighted area. And then the five by 0.5 is gonna be 2.5 as our weighted area. Now let's go to our center shape there, the shape two. Uh, and it's going to be here halfway in the shape. And then the tricky part is of course calculating exactly what that location is. Now, this distance here and this distance here are easy to find. This is 0.5. This distance here is 1.5. But you need to remember that we're going back to our origin. And so we have this 1.5, but we also have this 1 over here. And so the, the y location of that is going to be at um, 2.5. And I left the two there because the x location, this is already 2.5 over and it's directly above it. So this is also 2.5. So both the x and y locations of this shape's centroid are at 2.5. And then our 3 times 2.5 will get us 7.5 for our weighted. And 3 times 2.5 will get us 7.5 here as well. Finally, the top shape, uh, we want to get the centroid location for that. And so again, the rectangle part of it is easy. We know that the centroid is right in the middle of the rectangle. And we can know that this distance here is 0.5 away from the top of it. And you know this distance from over here is 1.5. And what I like to note then is instead of like adding up all these distances and stuff, and I definitely can't use those numbers, I'm going to look and I'm going to say, hey, this 5 here is the overall width minus the 1.5. And so my x location is going to be 3.5. And my y location is, is going to be, oh, sorry, the, the x location is this 5. The y location is this 5 minus the 0.5. And so that's just going to be 4.5. And so what we notice is this 3 times 4.5 for the y, that's actually going to get us 12. And then plus the 1.5 is 13.5. So what we notice is when we add up, and then up here we get the 10.5. But when we add these up, what we're going to see is that this y location at the bottom here, even though it's not the biggest shape, is having a huge impact on the overall area. And so let's add this up. 2.5 plus 7.5 is 10, uh, plus the 13.5 is 23.5. And then the y location, the y centroid location, will be the 23.5 divided by 11. We take this number and we divide it by that number. We take the sum of the weighted 
area is divided by the total area. And for that answer, we get 2.14 inches from the origin. And the x location, it doesn't really matter which one you find first. The x location, if we add these up, 12.5 plus 7.5 is, of course, 20 plus uh, 10.5 is 30.5, and if we do 30.5 divided by 11, we get our answer of 2.77 inches. And so where is the x location? Where is 2.77 on our graph? 2.77, of course, it's between 2.5, and this is at 3, and so it's in here somewhere. And I'll erase that now. And then the 2.14, of course, is um, lower than this. And so really our centroid location is about right about, I'm going to erase this because it's in the way, about right about here. This is the final answer, and it's at 2.77, 2.14. And why is it there? Why is it below halfway? Why is it, not, why is it below halfway for the y, and why is it to the right of this x? Well, more of the shape is over to the right because this is not centered up here. And then also more of the shape is down at the bottom because this is such a wide rectangle down here. And so that's why it's more to the right and down than the geometric center. And so that is where our centroid location is for this shape.